World Trade Organization Director General Dr. Ngozi Okonjo-Iweala is calling on members uh, to go the extra mile to find an agreement on issues like the world food crisis, making COVID vaccines available uh, for developing countries and sustaining fish stocks. Uh, today is the last day of the conference in Geneva, and if talks fail, more questions will be asked about the WTO's legitimacy. Uh, Dr. okonjo has been talking exclusively to Arise News Chief Correspondent John Cookson, whose first question was to her was how confident she was about getting the big issues across the line down to the wire and um, we were working as you noted till uh, 1 a.m. last night it's difficult to predict I have to tell the truth uh, there's still very intense negotiations going on on every topic uh, so perhaps a little bit later in the day I will be able to tell but there's intense work still going on vaccines you know people are still uh, ministers are still talking behind to each other bilaterally in little groups to see if we can get a breakthrough. We, were, we thought we were almost there yesterday, we really did, and then it just didn't quite come together. Um, so we, we, I'm hoping uh, something will come through there. Uh, on, on, on the food crisis and food security, again, we are very close, but there are one or two members who have other issues they want to see recognized in the declaration. And that negotiation is going on. Whether the other members will accept, it's not clear at this moment. Again, we have the declaration. Virtually, I would say every member, um, up to 160 plus, uh, they are supportive of the declaration and ready to go, but there are one or two members who have issues. So that's what was being worked out till late last night. So every package is like just almost there. But you know how it is at the WTO. You feel like you're just almost there. And then for some reason, because of one word, you know, uh, inability to be flexible enough and to accommodate each other, it doesn't work. So let's see what will happen. We're pushing as hard as we can. Fisheries, the same. They are all in the same position. But I think we're very close in, in the vaccines, very close in the food, uh, you know, a little clo closer in the fisheries than we were when we started the conference. But we're not there. We haven't clinched any yet. Right at the start of this conference, you said that the road ahead will be rocky, it will be bumpy, there will be a, a landmine or two along the way. Yes. How rocky and how bumpy has it been? Very bumpy, very rocky, and the landmines have been there. You know, I don't know whether they're landmines or hand grenades or whatever. <laughs> Something explosive. Just when you think you're about to close, a grenade is launched into the negotiations and, and then that sets you back and then you have to come back again to regroup. It's been, it's a very bumpy road. Now you're renowned for your political skills and I'm sure you're giving it your, your, your best shot. Um, how frustrating is it for you when you get a country, and I, I just select one like India, uh, putting uh, the, the block on something, how frustrating is it for you on a personal level? Well, you know, on a personal level, you know, perhaps it's, it's my outlook. I never really give up till the last minute. Um, so uh, it, it is difficult if you think you've almost clinched a deal and then one country comes in and for whatever reason, they're not happy with it. They want something in, inserted, then all the others don't agree to that. That's the landmine or the hand grenade I'm talking about. You think you're almost there and then you get a set of demands to be included uh, in the agreement that you were not expecting. Um, I, well, I started out seeing it was going to be bumpy, so I'm not terribly surprised, but I hope we can overcome because grenades are never pleasant. <laughs> Neither are landmines, you know, that's why you have to navigate around them. So uh, we'll keep pushing and see if we can get somewhere. You know, I'm just telling the ministers to keep the noses to the grindstone, so to speak, and keep going. I just want to tell you, if it doesn't come together, it won't be for lack of trying. So I'm, I'm giving it my all. You're giving it your best job. Yeah. You also want to consider major reforms to the WTO to make it fit for purpose in the 21st century. 
What is the single most reform that you'd like to see? For example, this idea of consensus, which doesn't seem to work. Well, the things that we thought should be reformed before the meeting are still top. I think everyone would like to see uh, um, the dispute settlement system. If you ask any member, you know the appellate body, um, uh, the dispute settlement system is two tiers. You have the panel that makes a ruling. If a member doesn't like the ruling against them, they can appeal to the appellate body. So they always have hope. And the appellate body hasn't been working. So we've had the panel working, by the way. But when there's an appeal, it doesn't go anywhere. So all members, or I would say three quarters, close to 95% actually, much more, they want this reform and they're waiting. Now, the Americans had made a lot of criticisms against the appellate body. And initially, they were not willing to, to talk about it or to start. But now, um, it, it's a good thing. They've started reaching out. And we're hoping that during this uh, conference, they'd be reaching out to many more uh, ministers. So that talk about what is the process for reform is, is ongoing. So that's one. Of course, consensus. Everybody asks. And you're absolutely right. Of, of when you need to get the backing of 164 members in order to agree when any one member can block it. It's extremely difficult. So it's not a system that is a, an easy one. Um, it has managed to get to some deals in the past, but it's become increasingly clear over the past 20 years that since they've not, no deal has, the fisheries agreement has not closed, the agriculture agreement has, they're all multilateral agreements, that it's become more and more difficult. And you see members trying to do more plurilaterals. Me and plurilaterals are another instrument. So if you can't get every member to agree, like-minded members who want to make an agreement go off together and negotiate it. And we're seeing more and more of that. And some of them are uh, highly successful. The Information Technology Agreement has 60-something uh, members. Uh, and and you know, it works very well. The government procurement uh, agreement. So there are some agreements. They are open to others to join at any time. Um, but increasingly, members are coming together and doing that. I still think the multilateral instrument with consensus is the best. It gives developing countries, the small ones, an equal voice. Um, but if it ends up in gridlock, all the time and not yielding any agreement. And I'm sure members will begin to question more and more. Uh, and you're likely to see more plurilaterals, like-minded members getting together. Right now, we have the <clears throat> investment facilitation agreement being negotiated. There are many developing countries who are members, 110 members are negotiating this. That's almost coming to the entire body. Uh, but there are members who want to get it done. And you may see more of that happening. So I've been telling the ministers, all of you, if all of us here, if we want the multilateral instrument to survive, then you must manage to bring yourselves to consensus over one or two of the agreements being negotiated. Then that will demonstrate that you know the multilateral instrument can work. So definitely, if it continues going that way, then Members will have to ask themselves questions about, does this need reform? Does it need a different approach? In my speech, I had advocated that it's not just one instrument. We have to learn to use multiple approaches. Some members don't like that. They don't like the plurilaterals. India and South Africa don't uh, have some legal questions about it. But I think the key is to allow the multilateral instrument by consensus to, uh, to succeed, if you want it to continue. So let's see whether we can do that. Does that mean that that will allow the WTO to continue? The, it's not just the WTO needs to do many reforms, not just about that. For instance, one of the exciting things that we have now is digital trade. And we don't yet have rules to underpin e-commerce. But that's happening plurilaterally. Because there are many like-minded members, 86 of them, 86 members, who think 
Let's start these negotiations. It's a member-driven organization. So how things start is some members say, we really need this. And then they try to convince other members to join. And when there's a critical mass, they start negotiating an agreement. And right now, for e-commerce, uh, there are 86 members. It's going quite well. Um, and and uh, so I think we'll be able to make rules. And perhaps by the time they finish, they'll have up to 100 members. That's significant. So that's why I'm saying to you, the, the WTO, you will see a shift. If the multilateral instrument doesn't succeed, you see more and more of a shift of plurilaterals. And, that, and that's the direction it's going. But there are some members who think the multilateral instrument should only be the only one. I mentioned South Africa and India. And I always say to them, if you want that to be the case, then we've all work, got to work together to allow it to succeed. On the, you can't say on the one hand that multilateral instruments are the, are the best thing. And then on the other hand, it doesn't yield any agreement. So, you know, you have to really work hard, and that's why I'm urging them and running around, trying to encourage everybody. You know, some of these things really matter for people uh, in developing countries, for people all over the world. Just imagine the vaccines. If we are able to, to, um, to close that agreement, it will mean that manufacturing capacity in Africa, for instance, on our continent, will, the manufacturers will have access uh, to these patents um, for a period of time and they'll be able to manufacture vaccines. This is good because you're importing 99% of your vaccines in Africa, 95% of pharmaceuticals. So that matters to millions of people all over the world. Um, so that, that would be a good thing. And, and fisheries also matters. Sustainability of the oceans and the fisheries is important to everyone around the world, isn't it? And because it's the oceans, you need everyone to come together. There are just some issues like fisheries, like pandemic, that need everybody around the table. Because even getting uh, some group of members, unless you can get up to 100, more than 160 of them, may not be completely the solution. So, and fisheries, if we don't, our oceans are being depleted, our fish stocks are almost 50% overfished. You don't want a situation in which poor fisher women and men can't get a livelihood because you have big industrial fisheries subsidized just trawling the oceans. So we need an agreement to stop that so that future generations will find fish and, and a livelihood. Dr. Ngozi, go and knock some heads together. <laughs> Absolute success, and, and, and thank you for talking to Arise News. Arise. Well, th thank you, John, and I'll do my very, very best. I just want people to know if members cannot come together, it won't be for lack of trying. Let me go. Today is another day to, to see if we can get there.